This example shows an application of Laplace transform for analyzing a double mass spring mechanical system. There are two masses involved, M1 and M2 as shown here, and uh, there are three springs uh, with a spring coefficients K1, K2, and K3, and also damping coefficients B1, B2, and B3. We are assuming that at time T0, uh, there are these forces that are applied uh, to these masses F1 U of T so it's going to be a constant value of force that is applied after time T equal to 0 and also we're going to assume that uh, at time T0 there is a new force F2 U T U of T is applied here so it's going to be a constant force of F2 starting from time T equal to 0 so we want to analyze this system and of course we start with uh, Newton's law, Newton's second law, in which we are saying for each mass, let's say for M1, we can say sigma F, the sum of all forces applied to M1, should be equal to M1 uh, second derivative of displacement for mass M1, which is the acceleration. Okay, so the only thing we need to do is just um, uh, finding all these forces. So what we have is um, we have uh, force F1, um, U of T. And then, of course, counteracting the force will be the force from the spring K1. So we know that... Um, that is proportional to displacement, so it will be k1 x1, and x1 is a function of time, of course. I'm not going to write the uh, argument of uh, time just for the sake of saving some space here. And then also the uh, b1 is going to contribute uh, in the form of minus b1, uh, the first derivative of the displacement, which is a speed. And then at the same time, K3 will come into picture uh, counteracting the movement of M1, but also it depends on how M2 is moving. So let's say if M1 and M2 happen to be moving exactly same amount, K3 uh, or the third, third spring here won't feel anything because both ends of it um, end up moving at this um, same amount of uh, displacement. So Therefore, the amount of resistance or counteracting that is coming from the contribution of the K3 uh, would be naturally uh, depending on uh, the difference of the two displacement X1 minus X2, which are function of time for the two masses involved here. Okay, and lastly, the same argument applies for uh, B3, so minus B3, and it would be, of course, um, the first derivative of x1 minus first derivative of x2 as a representation of the speed of movement for mass m1 and m2. Uh, this whole thing should be equal to m1 times uh, acceleration of the mass m1. Uh, okay, so now that we have this, uh, we can... Uh, uh, just a little bit simplify this and uh, clean it up. Clean it up. So we have um, effectively. Um, let's uh, move everything here to the other side. So we have f one u of t equal to m one, um, the second derivative of. Let's also use the. Uh, easier representation of second derivative double dot and then we have uh, plus b1 minus b3 um, first derivative and then we have um, plus k3 uh, we have plus k1 
let me just make sure I'm not missing something here. So this is B1 plus B3. And then, and then what we have is plus K1 plus K3 X1. And then we have minus um, we have K3 X2. And finally, we have um, minus plus B3 uh, X2 dot. So the speed. Okay. You can write the same, exactly using the same approach. You can also write for M2 mass, the second mass, same argument. So you can say uh, from the Newton's second law, sigma F is equal to m2 acceleration of the second mass so it's going to be um, second derivative of x2 or displacement of the second mass uh, and with respect to time and then we uh, apply the same uh, situation so you have uh, f2 ut so again a constant force f2 is applied starting from time zero and then there will be counteracting from um, k2 the second spring here so it's going to be k2 times the displacement of the second mass and minus of course b3 b2 so minus b2 um, displacement of the second mass and uh, same argument so the counteracting this time will be depending on um, x2 minus x1 uh, of course and the same thing applies for B, B3 here except that uh, the counteracting depends on displacement uh, relative displacement speed of these two uh, masses so okay so what's gonna happen is if you rewrite this whole thing similar to what we did uh, for the first mass so you have F2 U of T will be equal to um, m2 x2 uh, second derivative plus you have this time b2 plus b3 uh, first derivative of second uh, mass displacement which is a speed and then you have plus k2 plus k3 um, x2 and finally, you have um, here minus K3, uh, this time X1, plus B3, this time speed of first mass. So these are the main equation we needed to uh, deal with this problem. Um, and let me use a different color here. So this is the equation one that I need. And this is the second equation that I need here so now i'm going to apply laplace transform to transform uh, these equations from time domain to s domain so that uh, rather than dealing with the derivatives i can deal with just uh, simple algebra so it, it makes life easier okay so what i can do is now um, i can say so uh, taking laplace transforms equation one uh, becomes via Laplace transform so f1 u of t becomes f1 over s and uh, knowing that assuming that the displacement um, x1 and x2 and a speed um, which is the derivative of displacement and acceleration at time zero before application of the force basically or just zero basically system is at a steady state before the forces are applied. So then there is no initial condition in the system. Therefore, I can simply say it's M2 S square um, X2. These are function of S, so X2 of S, because they were function of time. And then I can say it's uh, uh, B2 plus B3 uh, S, X2 of S, 
and finally we have k2 plus k3 x2 of s minus k3 plus b3 s x1 of uh, okay so my bad i started with with the second equation i guess okay so i'm going to change this to 2 and then I'm going to change this to, well, I can stick with 1 just to start modifying. So uh, this will be m1, and this will be x1, and this will be b1, and this will be x1. This is k1, and here is x1, and this is x2 of s okay so taking two equation two applying Laplace transform f2 over s m2 s a square x2 s b2 b3 s x2 of s plus k2 plus k3 x2 of s minus same thing we have here except it is for the first mass so x1 of s okay so rewriting this in the form of a matrix representation is going to help us so what we have is effectively this scenario we have um, m1 s square plus b1 plus b3 s plus k1 plus k3 okay and uh, here we have minus k3 plus b3 s okay um, here we have the same thing so minus k3 plus b3 s and here we have m2 s square plus b2 plus b3 s plus k2 plus k3 and this whole thing is multiplied by x1 of s and x2 of s and is equal to um, f1 over s and f2 over s i mean you can factor out over s so of course we can use kramer rule here um, to further solve this so uh, it's just a matter of um, tedious work because now you have to say this is a simple two by two equation so therefore uh, using um, th therefore using Kramer's formula or rule um, so we have um, effectively x1 um, of s equal to okay so it's as simple as this f1 over s f2 over s and keeping the second column so minus k 3 plus b3 um, s and m2 s square plus b2 plus b3 s plus k2 plus k3 okay that's the determinant of this one and then the determinant of let's name this Let's name this as matrix A, so determinant of matrix A. Okay, so uh, numerator here is relatively simple. Problem is denominator. Denominator, as you can see, the de determinant of A involves multiplying uh, this with here, and it results in a fourth order polynomial in the denominator as a function of s um, so generally speaking 
results in a fourth order polynomial uh, as a function of s um, so solving this in general um, is not going to be straightforward um, the fourth the, the fact that there is uh, an existence of a fourth order polynomial and denominator is an indication that we are dealing with um, for example a pair of complex conjugate uh, poles uh, in this system uh, but nonetheless depending on the actual value of k3 k1 k2 b1 b2 b3 m1 and m2 you will end up with different scenarios and situations. So things might get simplified in given the specific values of these parameters. But um, this would be the extent that, that um, I would like to cover because from this point on, it's just a matter of tedious math work to just uh, depending on the given value of parameters, you, get, you just simplify x of s and the same thing with x2 of s, of course, uh, and then using partial fraction expansion uh, you get to the point that you can easily convert from s domain back to time domain and find out the x1 of t and x2 of t uh, and uh, for x2 of s denominator is the same thing so it's determinant of a and numerator it's going to be we keep uh, this is again using the kramer rule so we keep the first column uh, Okay, as I am showing here and then you just replace the second column with f1 over s and f2 over s okay I hope that you find this uh, brief video tutorial regarding uh, an example of application of Laplace transform to analyze uh, a double mass spring mechanical system useful thank you